that may indeed prove that this is all just a hoax. Receipts, invoices, Ooh. potential emails. Storage Wars is officially ending after this. Be sure to watch this entire video as you're not going to want to miss out on what we have to share with you all today. The show has been said, been staged. But this strikes at the very core of what these shows are about. Do you want to win any of these items on the screen? If so, be sure to watch the whole video, leave a like, and comment the hidden message. Storage Wars is another reality show that, allegedly, plays loose with the definition of the word reality. Cast member Dave Hester approached producers with concerns over the show's authenticity numerous times. In fact, he filed a lawsuit against a &E Network and Originally Productions over those concerns in 2012. Hester's suspicions arose because whenever he won a bid, producers would draw his attention to certain boxes or unload the storage unit so he would discover certain items. Like the time he found a pile of old newspapers, which announced Elvis Presley's death. Or when he found a car underneath a pile of trash. A BMW mini car to be exact. Hester alleged that the producers were planning valuable goods in the storage units ahead of time, otherwise known as salting, to make the show more interesting. This has been an accusation thrown at many of the storage unit shows over the time that they were popular. The show Auction Hunters, for example, had that accusation thrown at them more than once, especially since it seemed that they were actors and not true auction hunters. Clearly that wasn't the case with the Storage Wars people, but it does make you wonder. And while all that sounds scandalous enough, Hester's lawsuit didn't stop there. What else did this lawsuit reveal. On top of the aforementioned salting of units, Hester's lawsuit also claimed that the show paid for units on behalf of the weaker cast members who lack both the skill and financial wherewithal to place winning bids. He also alleged that the show depicted the bidders participating in auctions when in reality no auction is taking place. But perhaps the most scandalous accusation in the suit was Hester's claim that producers paid for the plastic surgery that one of the female cast members underwent in order to create more appeal for the show. Lastly, Hester's lawsuit revealed his compensation package for what would have been his fourth season, had he not been fired raising his concerns, as the lawsuit also alleges. Hester claims that yelling yup on TV for another year was going to earn him $25,000 per episode, with a guaranteed minimum of 26 episodes, as well as a non-accountable expense account of $124,500 and a $25,000 signing bonus. That adds up to $799,500 to star on one season of the show, about buying abandoned storage units. Wow, that's a hefty price to pay for the so-called cleaning out of one's moral conscience. This definitely hinders a lot of business for the future of the show, and we can say that this may be a reason in why Storage Wars series is coming to an end. Oddly enough, a and &E didn't indignantly deny Dave Hester's accusations and metaphorically stand on a hill to proclaim the sanctity and the truth of reality television. Instead, representatives sort of admitted to staging practices by claiming that whatever behind-the-scenes action Storage Wars producers did were perfectly legal. In footnotes in its legal documents relating to the Hester suit, a and &E cited First Amendment protections. Elsewhere in the case, it mentioned that only game shows must be completely above board, authenticity-wise, and since Storage Wars isn't really a game show, the producers could do as they pleased. a and &E claimed Hester's lawsuit was driven by spite, and when all was said and done, he was ordered to pay the network's legal fees, but a judge also ruled he could proceed with his wrongful termination suit. In the end, Hester eventually returned to the show after brokering a settlement with a and &E, of which the terms and details weren't publicly disclosed. And given all that was said and revealed, that's not actually a big surprise. Let this be a lesson to you all. Just because something appears real and feels real at times, that doesn't mean that it is, especially on shows like these. Barry Weiss left to start his own show. And what's with the war thing? I mean, uh, storage wars, lobster wars, tattoo wars. Barry Weiss has been one of the original cast members on the series, but it seemed like the show was in a ton of turmoil, and he decided that it would be better to get out of there while he still could. His new show is called Buried Treasure, but it's also being produced by A&E, so go figure that. Weiss gets to do what he loves without all the drama that he experienced on Storage Wars, so we can say that he's totally winning in this case. Leaving the drama behind can be the best thing for a person when it gets to be too much, and he had the fame and finances to just do that. Fans didn't know what was going on in the beginning, and only noticed that Weiss was no longer on their favorite show, but it was all part of the upheaval that the series had been going through. It was probably a huge relief when Weiss got his own series on the network, so overall when you see someone who was an original cast member quit due to something like this, you have to think about the shady side of things. This is definitely one of the darker secrets of the show like Storage Wars. There's a lot going on with the network, crew, and the stars that sometimes just doesn't work out. 
and the need to breathe is more important than making a lot of money. Others, though, are more in line with just selling their souls as long as they get paid money for it. It's possible that the show had even more deep secrets, and we'll get into that later on. Show creator Tom Beers admits elements of show staging. Do we decide, um, let's have this conversation in a restaurant or at your house? Certainly, because you have to set the stage for it. You have to bring the camera somewhere. You know what's even worse than news getting out from former members that the show is staged? Well, actual cast members of the show telling us the show is staged. As the network's response to Hester's lawsuit clearly stated, they have no problem admitting that the show takes liberties with the true nature of the storage unit auction business. In fact, in a and motion to strike the suit, they allow that the show has captured the public's interest by combining elements of competition and business strategy, with the mystery of discovering what surprises may be found in an abandoned storage unit. In simpler terms, we're doing a TV show here, people. This sentiment was echoed by show creator Tom Beers, who told a panel discussion that not only does the show script approximately 50% of what the characters say, they also sometimes consolidate pieces from several auctions in a single locker in order to keep things interesting. After all, how many viewers would stay glued to a set watching locker after locker being open to find nothing but worthless old furniture and garbage they're generally filled with? So the truth in all of this staging drama is if you're looking for reality, look anywhere but reality TV. In truth, this is a tricky thing to condemn because obviously a a&E has to make a TV show that's compelling in order to get ratings, and by extension, make money. And as they noted, they do get these things from actual auctions. It's just not the auctions that are honestly being shown on the television. And it's true that they're combining things to make it more dramatic, but honestly, isn't that the point? The objects are real, but they're presented in a dramatized manner, or in any other words, it's done the TV way. It may not be the most honest thing to do, but again, the network has to do certain things in order to make money. Dave Hester also sued Trey Songs. Trey Songs was arrested after a performance at the Joe in December, and today's hearing was to decide whether to allow certain evidence in the case. Apparently a huge fan of court, Dave Hester also got into a legal battle with musician Trey Songs over the use of the catchphrase, yup. According to the New York Post, Hester and Songs each used the phrase both in speech and on merchandise over the years. But the hilarious distinction came via Hester's lawsuit, which sought a court order barring Songs from interfering with his use of the phrase. Hester's filing claims Songs version resembles an animal-like or non-human squeal, which begins with a distinct yee sound before finishing with a squeal-like up sound, which is distinct and different from Hester's more monosyllabic sounding guttural action bidding phrase, which is meant to convey the meaning of yes. Anyone want to guess how hard the judge rolled his eyes on this one? Why in the world would you go as far as to create a lawsuit over a catchphrase like this? It shows how selfish you are and it kind of causes people to go against you. But either way, if the stars of Storage Wars keep starting beef and lawsuits with other people, the show may just come to an end. And let's just be honest, this was a stupid one to file in court in any way, shape, or form. I honestly feel bad for the judge that had to deal with this case. Jared Schultz's dark past. <laughs> Though he may have vaguely mentioned it a few times on the show, veteran bitter Jared Schultz never elaborated on his criminal past. Too bad for him that the internet is a thing. Starcasm reported in 2012 that Schultz was placed behind bars for felony possession of a controlled substance, narcotics transportation, and DUI in 1997. And in 1999, he was busted again for pretty much the same things. Only this time, he had a parole violation added to his charges. For his crime, Schultz served a 16-month stretch in a state cell where there's no bidding for the top bunk. His stint on Storage Wars is something of a happy ending for Schultz. According to the Orange County Register, he got his first whiff of storage auctions from his aunt, who at the time was managing a public storage facility. At the same time, Schultz was trying to make it in the mortgage business and having a rough go staying afloat. Over time, he and his longtime partner, Brandy Pisante, would go on to open up their own secondhand store. Now and then, how did they go from there to Storage Wars? It all went down at an auction in Harbor City, California, where he met producers who were planning storage wars. The rest, of course, is history. But either way, this shady past is not a good look for anyone in the television world. However, as is the way of the world, Jerry got a chance to do better than his past, and he has. And Storage Wars has given him a new lease on life. And for that, we should be grateful. Though it is true that his past can come back to haunt him, it's not just happening yet. And that's a good thing. 
Redemption stories are always good to hear. The sad story of Mark Bellello. Auction house proprietor and game store owner Mark Bellello, aka Rico Suave, popped up in the second, third, and fourth seasons of Storage Wars as a bidder and a buyer, generally bringing a large stack of cash with him should he end up winning. He was a colorful character who unfortunately had some personal troubles off screen. In December 2012, Radar Online reported three years earlier, Ball pled guilty to a felony count of selling or transporting a controlled substance. He received three years probation, but was sent to the cell in 2011 when he violated his parole by getting caught with a firearm, which he'd recovered from a storage locker he'd purchased. In February 2013, Bellello was placed behind bars for possession of a small amount of a controlled substance, meaning not enough to distribute. He was also reportedly under the influence of the substance at the time of his arrest. Days later, he took his own life via carbon monoxide poisoning. So overall, this kind of falls on the show if you think about it. If Mark had not been a customer on Storage Wars, his life may have been a lot different. It's crazy to think that opening a storage unit can bring on someone's lowest point and ultimately end their life. With the uncontrolled lockers that are auctioned on this show, it's hard to know what you're getting into, and therefore it may be time to cancel the show as we know it. The Trials of Dan and Laura Dotson The Dotsons have been together for decades, and with a long relationship come ups, starring on a popular TV series, and downs. In 2012, the Dotsons were the victims of identity theft. According to an interview with TMZ, hackers got into their home computer and stole their credit card and bank account information. The cyber criminals might have gotten away with it too, or at least for a while, except that they used the Dotsons' accounts to make several huge purchases immediately and all at once, which alerted a credit card company's fraud protection unit. The purchases were thwarted, but the crooks left some evidence behind. While still remotely connected to the Dotsons' computer, they talked about the heist via instant messaging account, which the Dotsons could see taking place. They got screen grabs, turned them over to authorities. Two years later, Dan and Laura had the health scare of their lives, when Dan suffered a double brain aneurysm in Palm Springs, California. According to TMZ, Dan's condition was so bad when he got to the hospital that he was only given a 4-20% to chance of survival. Miraculously, Dan's surgery turned out to be a success. He was released from the hospital a little over a week later. But dang, it seems like these two are just in the midst of so many bad things. And while this was not what caused the show to end, it was definitely a close shot, as without Dan and Laura, Storage Wars just wouldn't be the same. This is another reality of television that people forget, mainly that things happen to people in these shows, because they're real people. They may seem larger than life on TV, but when the cameras are off, they have the same issues more or less than everyone else. The Dotsons have been through things that many other people have been through, and it's possible that they'll have to deal with even more stuff as time goes on. So never forget, these are people too, not just portrayals on a TV show.